and I'll grab this link. As it goes. Okay, copy link. Thinking we're live. Or are we? Hold on. Oh, I think it's uh it's only got me because I'm the only one talking. Uh, got it. All right, say something, talk. Say something and talk. Oh, look at that head bobbing. I'm telling you. <laughs> Is that it was your magical it? voice? <laughs> yeah, I'll have to watch. I, I, there's a delay on YouTube, of course, so I just got to wait and see if, uh, if you show up. Isn't it fun to sneak on like this? Yeah. Nobody knows. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, he's there. Okay, it's quite a bit delay. Yeah, it just it just switches back between me and you. Basically, is what's happening. So, we could change that view, speaker, gallery. Um, we could do that. Then we both should show up. Okay. Yeah. So I was uh, talking with Woo Woo Dude here the last few days and whatnot, and uh, there's some interesting stuff <laughs> to say. To- to say the least, you know, last time we talked, you said, you know, uh, look up, you know, spirits stay and look up. You know, we had this this interesting comet that's like green. And they're like, oh, it hasn't been here in 50,000 years. 50,000. I'm like, yeah, it's probably no coincidence. And then you're like, yeah, you remember what they told me? Look up. And I go, oh, yeah. And you mentioned to me yesterday about the Kachinas. Maybe we'll start there. What do you, you know about the Kachinas? Yeah, very interesting. As um, you know, it's not just one comet. Another one has come by up there. I don't I, I don't know if you've seen that. So the size of the green one? Yeah, yeah. A big giant one also went around the sun. And a very strange part about it when somebody sent it to me was that you know supposedly it's made of ice. So the sun's not supposed to really react to it. And it did. Hmm. Uh, pretty, pretty strange. So now we have two of them. Um, and I think they called this one the alien comet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Because> it, yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord. But, you know, so I, I feel so many people in the past has gotten the you know the blue kachina wrong and i said my goodness i said this is it and this is a warning uh that's why when you and i had been talking about it i said this is a warning uh but they keep 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 saying to me look up look up now i know it was like the end of december you and i were talking about that and when we got into the beginning of january and now these things pop up and the balloon now this freaking balloon. Yeah. Look up. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Now it, now we have a balloon, right? Actually, I was just told there's another balloon coming right now. Did By you somebody? Hear? Yeah, oh, somebody. No, somebody sent me a text and said, "Hey, you know, there's a there's another one now coming, and we might hear about it either later tonight or tomorrow." And um, again, you're just going, there's too many coincidences here. And I really believe the big warning is about everything. Uh, I I really believe that this year is going to be a lot more difficult with the incredible amounts of weather conditions, abnormal things going on, geological um, and I know it's all interconnected with the crossing of the planet. That's why every time I connect with you or JC, I always send that blurb out to everybody that don't underestimate this. Okay. And in turn, because of this, plans are being shifted and they're being pushed ahead big time uh, because it's happening quicker. So that was one thing that they had told me 
quite a long time ago that war would build because of this. They know they only have a certain amount of time to get whatever they need to get done. So the last time we were on, or two times ago, when when Spirit had shown me, um, and it had to do with the with the conflict that's going on, and they tipped over a bowl of beef stew, and it went everywhere, made a mess. So I really believe that's also interconnected with the warnings that we're getting with the comets, you know, the balloons. I'm going, okay, the crap's about to hit the fan. A lot worse. It's going to splatter. And I believe that that's going to be happening. Now, also, yesterday, I think it was yesterday, a day before yesterday, it was announced. And that was part of something. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I think it was probably when I was still in the hospital or just coming out of the hospital, you know, when I was getting a lot of visions that I, I said, there's going to be two separate financial systems. I said that two separate. Well, so it was announced either yesterday, the day before yesterday, that uh, Russia and Iran has separated from being on a Swiss system. Yep, I've heard, I read that. Yeah, so that's that's happening. That's going to expand out. And part of that was that mm -hmm. I saw the East doing better than the West when it came to the financials and to their system until we joined back. So we're going to have some problems here. And I think with the things that go on in these other countries that we're going to see um, more incursions and more people jumping on certain people's teams. So we're in what would be considered the, um, the third um, WW. Okay, we're already in. And, you know, what comes out of it, we'll see. All right. But I, I do know that there's big hands up there moving people around and doing things. And we've just got to sit here and um, pay attention to it. Um, but don't be consumed by it. Because right. there's not one damn thing we can do about it. We've got to flow with it, you know, and, and not, not to mentally lose it. Go ahead, Joe. You're about to say something. Yeah, I was going to tell everybody. I It's been a, a little bit since we talked, me and him talked, and I was uh, driving yesterday, and I go, oh, let me, let me call him. Uh, and um, so I, he answers the phone. He's like, oh, I, I just, just I got to tell you, before we get started, uh, they've been all over me. They're really watching me right now. They're listening on me, and if we get hung up on, and then it goes, click. <laughs> I mean, he just says it. It click. Look at my phone. Imagine that. Redial. Oh, that was fast. We tried five or six times. Click, 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 click. We even tried to plead with him. Like, look, could you just, we know you're doing it. Like, could you just let us have a chat? Nope, click. Okay. I said, you know what? Why don't we try Signal? It's just going to use data only. It's not, not a cell phone, uh, cell tower voice thing. It's just data from the cell tower. Maybe we'll get lucky. So I, I call him on, or he ended up calling me on, signal and with the rest of the conversation just audio you know which is what it was set to it worked just fine but the amount of knockoffs that happened <laughs> to you that day and then continued when of course when i called uh, which is why you warned me right away and uh it's like yeah they're, they're just they're agitated right now and uh yeah that was interesting that was real interesting i've never had that many disconnects i mean even, well, even was, with you, when you go in the, the dark zone, when you're driving, I know where that is. And you right. always tell me, okay, I'm going through the black zone. I might lose you. And right. I always lose you because you, you have no signal there. Right. But this wasn't that case. This is where oh, you no. had plenty of signal. And I know I had plenty of signal because um, I'm pretty much ta – I've talked to you everywhere. I've, I've pretty much driven around here. And I was driving nowhere new, and, you know, talking to you. So I was just – I mean, as soon as you gave the warning, boom, click, I go, whoa, okay. So we're like, yeah, listen. We know you're listening, but, you know, can you just let it up? Click. Okay, let's try again. We have about four, five, six times. So, all right, let's try signal. And then it worked. And we had a rest of the conversation. I'm like, you know, even, even if they're still listening, they're realizing 
we're just talking, you know, just catching up. It's nothing big, you know, while they're busting those balls like that. But it was uh, it was interesting to experience that when I was on the phone with him. And uh, yeah. so clearly, as long as you and I have been talking, we've not had that kind of th- thing happen like that to that kind of a level. No. You know, it's usually one off and it's like, oh, okay, did we just accidentally get disconnected or did they do it once? You know, you, you don't know. And then this was just like, you know, as soon as you would say the word or, or, or we talk and then you'd ask, you know, can you just let us talk? Boom, gone. No. Like, yeah. Okay. So just if you're listening to that alone, like if I'm hearing that right now, I'm going to go, yeah, those guys have known each other for a while. They've never had that happen before. There's some inter- interesting stuff happening in our, you know, political, whatever world system. And that just happened between just those two guys. It's not like we're freaking top secret guys. I mean, we're just a couple of jabrones, you know, a couple, a couple of shaman of the north and the shaman of the south. And <laughs> we're going to have just... to go to smoke signals, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'll yeah, send seriously. you a balloon. I'll send you a balloon. <laughs> yeah, how about that? Make sure there's, there's high-tech Chinese equipment on it, though, if you send it over here, you know, make sure it's got the best of the best. So... You know, and, and I want to mention something, too, now that I just said that. So I haven't told you guys this because uh, it's not something I normally would tell anybody, even on Patreon. It's a personal thing. It's about my treasure hunting stuff. And I got a confirmation the other day. Uh, it had to do with a drone. And it it's showing me that it had this very high tech equipment on it, in particular, some kind of camera system, uh, like a two different camera systems on it. But I just remember getting this knowledge that. It's bigger than a normal drone, and it's just – it is a spying kind of a thing, but it's got very powerful technology on it. And I, I, I didn't get told that. I didn't necessarily see it. It just came in as a knowing in the dream, and then I look up at it, and I see these two, you know, distinct camera lens-looking things. And it, the main message in there, I think, was some information I asked about it, one of these treasure hunting dreams I got, and I got the answer – but now that this balloon's flying over and they're saying, yes, it's got like this high tech Chinese stuff on it. You know, I'm going, ah. you know, spirit does that many meanings in one dream. And I'm just not, you know, and it, this happened just before this balloon. I mean, this was uh Monday. I think I, when I woke up Monday, it was either Monday. Yeah. I think when I woke up Monday, I had the dream, wrote it down like I do. And I go, Oh, I think I know what that meant. Thanks for the answer spirit. But the drone wasn't necessarily really needed in the dream uh, for the answer that I got, but I guess they used it. But again, this really highly advanced, bigger than normal drone. Well, this balloon is bigger than a normal balloon. Oh, yeah. You know? So yeah. it's like, huh. And there's been a couple of photos online where it looks like it's got a string of some kind of, I don't know if it's a solar array or something on there that's just, you know, feeding power to something, you know. If it's a balloon, it's not going to need that kind of solar array to uh, power something that a balloon would need, you know, uh, unless there's some heavy duty electronics on there. So I go, oh, maybe that's it. So now you're saying there's a second balloon. Yeah. Yeah. It was just told to me about an hour ago. Hmm. Yeah. And it's and it's coming up now. I think it's coming out of Canada or something up in that area. And, of course, because China, and what, we saw the military training with China. Remember that? They were letting Chinese over there. Yeah. Well, they're. Yeah, they're on our borders. So, I mean, it, it, if everything goes really south, just just remember a long time ago, I had told you about when I was teaching channeling and um, I was able to tap into, for a long time, um, a group of beings that were called the Council of Twelve. And each one would enter into me when we would do this and they were the ones that told me and warned me about the blue heads mm. remember and yep. actually it's a blue helmet and yep. um yeah and then i've had a lot of confirmation that they're already here and um so you know are they going to be used we'll, we'll see but that was a big warning to me and that was quite a few years ago Mm-hmm. You know, that's why, you know, sometimes, you know, when I talk to people about dream books or things like that, just write the stuff down. It doesn't mean you're going to get the true meaning instantly. It doesn't work that way. 
Sometimes, yes, okay? But a lot of times, they give you information that it could be for 30 days down the road. It could be six years down the road. So when you write it all down, you always got something to go back at and look at, all right, and put the sermon. And then all of a sudden you go, oh, my God, this is what it meant. It's kind of like, you know, when you and I would talk and I say spirit says, look up in February, look up in February. And, and then, you know, the things that are happening one after the other, after the other, after the other, you just go, dude, okay. But it's part of a very big thing. Kind of like the black swans falling. Remember the last thing I said is that that one of the guys said, we'll be shooting these things down, okay, till hell freezes over. And then I was put into the wintertime, okay? And here we are in the wintertime. And these swans are falling. And it's getting really, really nasty out there. Well, would it be interesting, since you say there's a second one now, and I, I was I was gone for hours, you know, haven't checked anything for news, new stuff, but if there's a second balloon now. I didn't see it on news. Somebody gave it. Yeah, someone had told you that. Yeah, so let's just assume yeah. for a second it's true. We haven't, either of us haven't been able to verify that. Maybe you guys can in the uh, uh, chat section there and let us know. Oh, yeah, there's a second one. Um, but really, somebody- shoot. I'm, I'm going to wait. It's a, such a oh, it's okay. about a 10 or 15 second delay, so we'll wait. Okay. But if that's the case, shoot down black swans, balloon flying over. Huh. Maybe one, we get to see what's on it. You know, it comes down and we get to see what's on it. Or it does something and we have to shoot it down. Well, when you think that we're on the verge of having a war. Yeah, they said, yep, yeah, number two. Okay. Really, somebody confirmed it. We're on the verge of, all right, bottom line, we're in WW3. Hands down, bottom line, okay? It's no different than WW2. Nobody really thought of us being in it until Pearl Harbor get it. But it was still going on, all right? And that's what's happening here. Electronically, this is a, the new age now. So. They're hitting everybody electronically, doing things in other people's lands. I mean, so there's so many different types of fronts here that we're dealing with. And we're talking about the issue of an island that we're very concerned. I'm, I'm trying to be careful. That begins with the letter T. Okay. And we're talking about maybe going at it with China on that one. So why the hell would you let a balloon right. that could carry anything? Who knows what? Yeah. Well, EMP. I mean, it could do all kinds of EMP. stuff. EMP. Well, why even use that? Biological. That's it. Look at, look at what was done with a couple of um, turkey basters. <laughs> okay. Um, and, and, and what's happening here? Now, that's the other thing that I think I told you. But I've told many people that I read that they said um, this year, 2023, and they said it to me like this, millions upon millions upon millions will be leaving, okay, Earth. Yep. yep. Okay. Now, I have no idea, you know, with what's been happening, but I believe it's in a combination of everything, geological, weather-related. Uh, turkey baster, um, and war, right? So this is going to go crazy. Um, and um, we really need to pay attention to this month of February um, because they're very adamant about looking up and you just brought out the black swans shooting down I see. I didn't even put that together. That yeah, that came in as soon as you mentioned that. I go, oh, but, I need to say that. So, but, oh yeah, but that's a huge hit, and that's why when when I get true visions, the, these are not um, dreams. You know, these are wide awake type thing, and and I let 
you know, people know about it, people on YouTube, I always say, I want all of you, because so many of you got such gifts that I talk to, put your discernment in, you know, then come back on a chat thing later down and, and say something, all right, because we're doing this as a collective together, all right, and trying to figure out everything because there's just too many cogs in this wheel that it, there's too many black swans, right? Yeah. It's coming from every direction that there is. So we, we all need to pay attention. Never mind what's been happening to the hunter who is now being hunted. Oh, <laughs> is that my daughter? Oh, she's so lucky. She just texted me. She lives an hour away. Oh, it's only minus six here. <laughs> Well, it's only minus 21 where I am, and, and it's supposed to start getting windy later. It's like, dude, <laughs> you know, I should take my pussinator, wet him and throw him up in the snow. And then <laughs> dude, use a stopwatch. See how fast it takes to freeze. <laughs> <laughs> that cat would kick my ass. He oh. would come in here and go, oh, yeah, yo, man, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not funny. <laughs> yeah. I don't have claws, but I'm going to punch you right in the face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he'll be sleeping at night. Remember who, I, what I, was I, that, Cat's Eye, that movie Cat's Eye? <laughs> the little creature would come out and suck the breath out. The cat would say, the cat's going to be like, little, no, I'm letting him. All these little bruises on my head. Yeah. <laughs> and the cat going. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be sleeping at night. He's going to be see a little paw come over your mouth. <laughs> oh, what the hell? The cat's going to be looking at you. Do it again. <laughs> I dare you. <ya. laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a love hate relationship. You know, it's a great animal. It reminded me of my ex wife. What can I say? Yeah, you know. <laughs> but um, great. yeah, so, you know, as we proceed through this year, um, we're, we are definitely going to be affected way more by uh, the crossing. All right. So people just need to just eyeball weather, which is really happening now, but it's going to get worse along with everything else. So we got a lot of things and, and, and we still got to find time every day to find something beautiful of the day. Don't get ca caught up in, it, you know, because until it lands on your doorstep, right. There's nothing for you to do. You just right. got to flow with this energy and, it takes longevity. This is not a sprint. This is a cross-country run. And the object is to make it through all these obstacles that come up the backside of this, all right, where, where all the cool shit would be. So we just need to be smart. That's all we can do, you know, in this. Yeah. What do you have to say about that, Mr. Joseph? Well, I was going to tell all you guys, there's a show on TV now on um, took the, the time slot of Blind Frog Ranch. The reason you're not watching Blind Frog Ranch is because a friend of mine is suing Dwayne Olinger of Blind Frog Ranch, and I think they're a little nervous. <laughs> so they're not filming a season three, apparently. Um, but that time slot has been filled with a show called Gold, Lies, and Videotape. It's about the treasure hunting story, Doc Noss. His name was Milton Noss. And it's, he was one of the biggest treasure hunting stories ever because he found this enormous treasure. They said that, that there was over 16,000 gold bars alone, just bars, forget everything else. And he had gotten into this, this peak called Victoria Peak back in like the late 30s, I think. And him and his wife, Ova Nas, or Babe as he called her, got a treasure trove claim. And the next thing he knows, White Sands Millsa Range, oh, we, we need that land. That's on our border now. They kicked him out. And uh, anyways, it, it goes over the whole story tonight. Uh, it's on probably right now or about to start at nine o'clock, nine to 10 Eastern. Um, I'm on season or episode, season one, episode four. So it's interesting. Uh, show to oh, watch. there's already been four episodes to this? Yeah. And this oh. is, if it wasn't for this story, I probably, this is one of those ones that caught me really young. I, uh, they had a major... The, the TV show back in the day, Unsolved Mysteries with Robert Stack. My wife, I she goes, I hate that guy's voice. It scared the shit out of me. I had to turn off every time I heard him talk. 
<laughs> I'm like, man, I love Unsolved Mysteries. You know, it's like a late 80s, early 90s show. And then they stopped. But one of the last ones they did was, you know, like the show would have three or four mini shows within it, you know, for an hour, you know, maybe 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, you know. Yeah. And they dedicated like a few days or something, I think, on just this Doc Nos story. So it was the first time I had ever heard it. And I was like a young teenager and stuff, you know. And I'm like, oh, my God, you know, I can't believe the government did this. And like, oh, my gosh, you know, all this stuff. And uh, that was my first experience of like treasure stuff, you know. And uh, if it wasn't for that, I probably would never, ever been where I am today, you know. So now they're telling the story. And just for everybody out there, long story short, my um, last Friday, they mentioned something in the show, which got me thinking about something I didn't know about. I, I want to say I asked Spirit. I asked Spirit for what's that? I want to say something to you. Oh, oh go ahead. All right. Um, what I'm getting from him, he's laughing at me. And he said, understand, I didn't leave it all in there. He said, because many people wanted to see where I was getting it. And I would set up little trails and I would put some of it in certain areas, not large amounts, but in certain areas. So that way he could go get it without anybody tracing them back to, he calls it the hoard, mm. okay? And and so it's all over the place, all right? So this white sands missile thing. Um, Doesn't matter. No, 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 no. He, he's laughing and, and he says, he's, he's actually planted. It's kind of like what he's showing me. It's like a chipmunk gathering nuts, mm. okay? He gets what he can. And then he puts it down and he buries it. Um, and, and the other thing that I'm getting from him is he would always put a flat rock over it. Okay. So he would recognize it easier because he's telling me out there, most of the rocks around it. And it was easier for yeah. him if he would drop a flat rock and then he would go on his way. And um, he's telling me, that his wife knew about this too. And they used to laugh about this. All right. Because many people wanted to know where it was. So whatever was up there and what I'm getting is there's no way he got it all out, but, um, but he got he, enough out. Well, that, that's just it. They, he, he's saying that his wife would help him. How I, I have no idea. And, um, and then they would bring them out. I, I, I think it was great difficulty in doing it. Yes, he, he would be in, and I think she'd have a rope and a pulley up top, and he'd come up as much as he could, and then he'd, he'd tie something up and have her, with the help of the pulley, would make it not as heavy, but she still said it was heavy as hell, you know, and it would kill you like one at a time because they were just so heavy. Um, but she, it was just him and her in the beginning. That was it. So that's why he's saying that to me. All right, but... Now he showed me, I, I just got three, but it's three zero that there's about 30 spots that he has put these things. Oh, and, wow. and, and, it, and it's not just bullion. And the funny thing about it, you know, when I think of my head bullion, you know, they're big, a bullion. These things are not. Um, what he's showing me is um, <sighs> bango, about the size of a cell phone. And just probably thick or whatever, a little thicker, yeah. But, but that's about the size of what he showed me. But it wasn't just gold. Um, there were, he's he's telling me there was silver, and there was also jewelry, and um, it, well, he showed me a goblet. So I'm almost thinking that somehow. He got his hands on some sort of a treasure that is a mixing of many different things. Yes. That was put there. Very yep. strange. Yep. Um, That's accurate. But it, yeah, but it's not not one spot. It's always look for the flat, the flat rock. Mm. Weird, huh? Well, that's good information because I, I was that dream I got just a few days ago with the drone and all this stuff. Um, I think I found one of his markings. A while back and didn't realize it but i got that feeling that i get you know like pay attention um when it when it happens and then i i, I just kept driving and i go no 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 stop 
go back up. You know that feeling back up. So I backed up. I was by myself. This is last year. And um, I backed up and I got out and I go, oh, what's that? And I saw something interesting that someone put something somewhere, you know, and and I go, oh, OK. But I didn't know what else about it. So I just left. I know exactly where this is. I'll go right back to it. But that dream I got the other day with the drone and all that showed me kind of basically like that spot, you could say. And it's, I didn't get much of like X marks a spot other than go back there, start looking, you know, like you better take a closer look kind of a thing. I think was what the dream was telling me. And it's not a big area. So I thought, OK, let me. Let me bring one of my detectors next time I go and try this. But um, I know he had, um, there's this thing called, I think, Carlotta's crown. And she was the princess or whatever of like the king of Mexico way back in the day, like, you know, hundreds of years ago. Uh, I'm not sure if she's under Maximilian or, or whatever, but um, supposedly he and there were some pictures they had showed about this this crown that his wife, uh, Nasa's, Doc Nasa's wife had. And you know, had like enormous amount of like diamonds and just, you know, almost priceless. And his wife loved to, to talk about stuff, you know, cause she was just so excited about all this stuff. And she ended up either taking something with her or telling somebody, you know, went out and told somebody at the bunch of people at the grocery store or showed them or something. I think it was that crown. And, you know, he's like, we don't need that kind of attention, you know? So he flips out and he's pissed off at her and he went and sit there. Not none of y'all going to find this when I'm, when I get, when I bury it and hide it this time, you know, so he put that somewhere. It could have been a little box, a little treasure box or something. And I'm like, man, I hope, I hope I stumble on that one. Cause that would be one, a good one to find, you know, yeah. if, if it's still out there. Yeah. Well, you know, the other thing that I keep getting is that, you know, you would think like I'm getting the flat rock that it would be next to other rocks, but it's not. It would be like you're just walking along and sand. There's some and then, weird spot. There's a flat rock. Yeah. And then there it is. Interesting. You know? and, well, I'll uh, tell you, this spot that I think I got from Spirit the other day, just you know what? Just so you guys know, I was watching the show. It was, it was last Friday, so it was episode three. And I asked Spirit, because I heard something in that episode that caught my eye or my ear, and I go, oh, I'm, maybe I'll ask Spirit about that one place I drove by and backed up, you know, because maybe that's one of his hiding spots, you know, is what my thoughts were. So just a couple of days later, I'm going to bed. I ask Spirit Sunday night, boom, I get that dream Monday and I go, oh my gosh, I now I know I think it's another Doc Noss site. The first dream I had last year about it was a different site and I knew it was some of his stash because I got told in the dream it was, but I haven't been able to go over there. Uh, then there got a second dream with a different location, which is the one I'm talking about now completely far, really far away from each other, actually. Um, but in that general area where he used to play. And so I, I asked Spirit, you know, about that one. I don't know whose this is. Is it Spanish? Is it Doc Noss? Is it something else? You know, I, I and I couldn't get an answer. Then I saw the show and I go, oh, so I asked for the dream. I get this dream Sunday night. And because I got the answer, I go, oh, my gosh, this has to be a Doc Noss site. I, I'm, I'm convinced now. And I go, OK, I need to go back to that one, too. You know, now that, now that I got this information, but. It was because of what I heard in that show on Friday that made me think about all this again, ask a question for spirit. And they gave it to me right away in that dream. Like, here you go. Boom. And yeah. I go, okay, got my answer. So that's this spot that I'm talking about that I had to back up and all that is absolutely perfect to what you just said. Like this isn't an area, even though it's by the mountain, uh, you know, technically speaking, it's right there, but it, there's not, there's no rock. If I stood there in any direction and looked around, there's not really any rocks. And certainly, I mean, maybe little tiny pebbles, you know, obviously stuff like that, but I'm more talking about any kind of rock and it's not there. So now that you're saying that, it's making me think, maybe take my drone again, same part of the dream, but there was a drone in there too. Dual meanings, triple meanings, fly my drone around and just zigzag around this area and see if, oh, hey, there's a flat rock down there. Right. Get a little closer. Okay. Boom. I got it marked now on GPS on the drone. Automatically, I'll go check it out. You know, the other thing is, you know, when you're talking with spirit, it, like I, I've said to you, say what you mean and mean what you say, be exact. You just got done saying um, that, is it Me is it the Mexican thing or... Spanish or this or that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you got no answer back. And... You know why you didn't really get an answer? I need to just ask one <laughs> because, question. Well, it, it, it's maybe it's all of the above. Right. Well, think about it. Yeah. 
he found Spanish gold bars and treasure. Yeah. And he also found Mexican stuff. Yeah. And there was even other stuff. Like you said, there was a mixture of stuff, yeah. some of That's which right. yeah. was troubling, I think, to them because they're like, how, how is this also in here? And I'm talking like they haven't gotten to this on the show yet, but the information that I have that it probably will get out on the show at some point um, was that there was even stuff, I think, from like, you know, Nazi gold was in this place, too. So if Nazi gold's in there, that's way modern. And then if that's in there, then how the hell is there, you know, four or five hundred year old Spanish gold bars that are 16,000 in there? Well, Sounds like a secret society or something has been using this place and just been storing all their shit in there. You know, I mean, people had, had said, you know, Doc was part maybe was a, one of these Masons or something. And that's how he yeah. knew. And he wasn't doing his job by guarding it. He was actually going in and looting it. Um, but I don't I don't I don't have that information. No one's ever said that he was uh, a Mason or anything. So I can't. Yeah, I, I, right I, I don't believe that that's the issue. OK, I, I just think it was. Over time that many uh, tribes and many types of people would gather this stuff, no different than the shaman in the cave, you know, protecting things, um, that armies have come through and bring it and deposit it, then they get other things and other things. And I think in the buildup of time, um, but uh, to get into White Sands, like I, like I said, I hear him just laughing. That ain't happening. It's not right. happening. Okay. Um, so wherever it is, but again, I keep getting 30 that he put 30 places small out. stashes. Yeah. And even and, one small stash would be life-changing. I mean, well, yeah, you know, life absolutely. Wealth. You know, so uh, speaking of life-changing, um, <laughs> How's everybody doing in crypto world? <laughs> <laughs> so in the month of January, I, I increased all my holdings uh, by about 33, 32%. Okay. On a technique that Spirit told me to do. And it's working. Do you want me to bring some of that up? Sure. Go for it. Okay. They told me not to be greedy. OK, and this at this time that everything was going to be very jagged. And then they showed me whales. I think I told you that. Yeah, I saw a pot of whales. So not one, so several. And they would go down and they come up for air and they would blow water out. And go, I went, I know what that means. OK, that there's a group of people that have the finances and the ability to grab Sheba and make it go and to get a bunch of people to come in and go, oh, I'm jumping on it, I'm jumping on it. But what Spirit told me is every time you see it hit 30 to 35%, take your pure profit. So what I've done is I had followed, um, you, you know, the cryptos that I have, like Sheba, yeah. I have Doge, I have Bitcoin Cash. So the ones that we're used to. And so I've been traveling down with them. OK, so I bought some stuff really, really low. So let's take, for instance, and I'm just going to throw out numbers. OK, let's say you bought into. And again, I'm just saying numbers. OK, it's not going to correlate with anything, but just so mentally people can get the gist of this. Let's say uh, you started buying cheaper at the number 20. I mean, there's so many zeros. I just say the number 20, all right? Well, and then it goes down further. And now it's down to 15. I buy it. It doesn't go back up. It goes even farther down. Now I buy at the number eight, okay? So I'm doing it incrementally. And then all of a sudden, a whale comes in, blows it up, and it jumps up 35%. Now, it might not reach your other ones that you bought higher, but the lowest one, whatever that amount is, you make 35% of. Only to, I, well, me, I only take the profit from it, only the pure profit from 
the lowest point I bought to the 35%. So I'm still leaving the coins in there. I'm just taking the profit. And I, I've been taking it. And I put it off to the side as dry powder for the same coin. So I'm not taking that profit and putting it onto some other some other coin. I'm not doing it. I'm using it specifically for that. So then it comes down, it comes down, comes down, and then it hits my mark again. And I take the 30% profit and I throw it back in. Now I have 30% more than what I started with. And and I I've done it with Doge, I've done it with Shiba, I did it with, with AMP. Um and, and I just wait for that. What, what they said, don't, don't be waiting for high amounts because you're not going to get it because everything is so crazy out there. But if you can make 30 to 35%, okay, and you do it, hey, you could pay your rent. You could pay your car payments. You know, it's not a fortune. But if you don't have to touch it, then you're building a war chest. Right. So that's what I've been doing. And for the month of January, now we're in February, but through the month of January, I increased my total holdings, Joe, by about 32%, right about that. That's pretty damn good. Pretty nice. You know, versus going out of your mind, not doing anything. <laughs> it's like, I, I keep it simple because I don't have those trading skills in any manner. I just do my, you know, uh, uh, on Coinbase and boom, boom, boom. And my God, it's working. Even right now, I think, I think Shiva's back up to thirteen, isn't it? I, I I'd have to go is. look. Um, but yeah. I do remember it was November the twenty fifth last year, two months ago, basically. And you had told us, oh, you know, spirits on my ass about Doge and, and Shiva again. And so I do a post on Patreon, like, hey guys, just who did you know call and told me this? So if you look. Right around that time, you know, a few days later, we're in December, whatever. And you look at the chart of either of those two coins, you'll see 35, 40 something percent from that time period till, you know, in recent times. So there's, you know, again, you, did, you could have easily just said 30 percent and you would have got both. No problem. You yeah. Know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, the funny part about it, I says, when am I supposed to sell it? This is what they said. They said, ask Joe. That's what they say. Thirty percent, yeah, thirty percent, baby. Grab that thirty. I turn on to YouTube, and you're on. You're saying it. You know, thirty five percent is a lot of money. You know, these days. I went, sold it. I said, <laughs> stop <laughs> on it. <laughs> that was awesome. So that's what I've been doing, um, and it's working. It's working. I mean, I'm not making a ton, but that's okay. Yeah, as you long know, as it's positive, you know, it makes you feel good. You see a bigger nest, you know, building. And when the big numbers do come, you have a bigger war chest, like you said. Well, that, well that's just it. Because I, I, with what I see in February and how tenacious it's going to get around the world, yeah, we're going to have a, we're going to have a drop. There's no doubt in my mind. All right. But if I keep doing this, I, I'm all set when everything straightens up. You know, you're, you're in a really great position. Yep. So um, that's been a lot of fun, you know. And I've been telling Juliet, I said, yeah, you know, I did all, I did all right. I made, I made 10 Gs, you know, o- over that amount of time. It's not a lot with what people play with, but I'm not playing with big numbers, you know, yeah. but hell. But you, but you got it. That's the thing, you know, every one of us started with a small. I, mean, I remember yeah. when I started with a few hundred dollars. Yeah. And then it was like thousands and then it was like tens of thousands. I'm going, holy shit. You know, again, with, uh, how's funny. I just, I just watched a, an orb skyrocket, like from your shoulder, like, Hey, go to the moon. <laughs> <Did they? laughs> but, but you know, you start small, you go bigger. Next thing you know, you're playing with house money. So again, if you make a mistake or, oh, damn, I, you know, it doesn't right. really hurt that bad at all because right. well, it's kind of free. You know, I traded my way up to that, you know? Yeah, and uh, you just yeah. people get scared with their money, and it's like, well, you know, scared money don't make money, but that also doesn't mean dump a shit ton of your money in for your first time and hope, no. you know, like no, you know, let it build up, let it get get into exactly. some of these trades and double it, triple it, and then you know, start yeah. playing. Well, you know, if if you make enough or it could pay your rent for that month or food for that month or whatever, I think so many people, Joe, have gotten in a habit, and it's greed. 
oh, I'm not going to waste my freaking time unless I make two, three hundred times on the dollar. Yeah. You know, and that's what spirit was trying to tell me that if you do this several times every month, what are you making? So at yeah, this it's, point, it's time, not a small. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. you know, yeah. it's some decent money if you. If you're yeah, playing. well, it's it's what is it's what is existing for us to do at this moment of time. All right. Because everything's on halt. All right. Because of the world itself changing, mm -hmm. you know, and um, and it's changing rapidly. OK, but um, but for, for you people who get bored, this oh, yeah. thing has been working like a champ for me and uh, just don't get greedy, you know, and, and just do it in this manner. And um, like I said, anything's better than nothing. Right. Versus just sitting there. Uh, and again, you did that with Amp and Doge in uh, Shiba, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, see, I I could have done it with Bitcoin Cash because um, I had bought in at, oh, golly, I think $94, I think it is. Um, I don't know where it is now, but that's just one of those coins that I just am not touching it because I know where, you know, where it's going to go. So it's like, I, I don't have to, but those, those little guys, okay. That can really be pumped by the whales. And again, the whales. Okay. Yeah. And, and like I said, when I saw the whale come up and, and spit the stuff out of, out of their, out of their portal there, I went, I get it, but they're working in teams, whoever these people are to do this. And basically they're doing it to take your money away. All right, because every oh, yeah, they want in. you. They want you to FOMO in, right? And at the top. You, you get the hell out before they mm -hmm. can do it. And for whatever reason, it seems like the thirty. You know, I I made 30, 29 percent on some of them, but I made thirty five and thirty eight on some of them. So right in that range, I just if it hits thirty, I, I'm up. And by the time I'm doing trade, maybe I'll get it at twenty nine, but. Even at 25, Joe, 25% yeah, profit? In a short period of time, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah, it's a lot of money, you know? And, and um, I think it's a great way to build up um, dry, dry powder, you know, unless you need it for, for home stuff. But that, that's a beautiful thing. So that's what I've been doing. And um, so I wanted people to know that what they do, they do. And again, you know, it's not like, I'm a financial analyst. I'm just the opposite. <laughs> I'm a crazy white-haired dude living out in a forest. <laughs> if you want to listen to me, knock yourself and out. <laughs> and you wouldn't you wouldn't know by just looking at you right now that it's negative 20 degrees outside. You know, it's oh, just you don't yeah. get that. Just obviously, you know. Yeah, yeah. Same as you always do, but boy. God, yeah. I, I kind of want to feel that. Like, I honestly, I want to be able to just like in my damn shirt and shorts here in Florida land. I want to go outside your damn porch for about five seconds and just feel the brutality of not minus 20 on me. I, you I just, know, you know, I think your YouTube people would pay to watch you do that, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be me frozen out there, not your cat. <laughs> I'd give anything to see you naked running down my freaking place. <laughs> oh, look at Joe. He's stiffening up. Yeah. And I don't think he's excited. <laughs> yeah, I think he's got an innie. Yes, I do. <laughs> no longer an Audi. <laughs> no, up here, we call that turtling. <laughs> <laughs> turtling, huh? <laughs> you hit the oceans out here, your little penis comes out and goes, are you kidding me? <laughs> and it runs back inside. <laughs> and your belly button pops out. <laughs> That's how you know it's me. <laughs> Holy oh shit. my god. <laughs> yeah, well, they're saying New England is gonna be the coldest spot on this planet tomorrow night or tonight. Tomorrow night, I think. Wow. That's crazy shit. Good thing you got that generator, just in case, you know, ice it's, and power lines and I'm sitting fine. Whew. I'm sitting fine, you know, in that respect. But they were on my ass to get that, you know. Mm -hmm. So I stepped it up, you know, and they provided. It wasn't me. They did it all. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't take. I can't take anything on that. You know, sure. they take care of me. It's like, yeah, you're getting kind of old. We don't need you out there trying to pull something at 21 <laughs> below zero. Yeah, the damn thing's frozen. 
<laughs> Five oh, just let it turn on by itself. It notices when the electric's out. It turns on like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, up here, they drive by. All they could see is a white head sitting out there. They didn't think it was a snowman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's what we'll do. <laughs> we got Thara's ass out. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> but um, I, they're talking um, 50 below zero, 40 to 50 below with the wood chill. That's you're gonna have to just take pictures or so. I, I mean, I don't know take if it's different. It? <laughs> yeah, I just have to know. I like at least see it somehow. Ice icicles and like whatever the hell it looks like. I don't even know. Hey, I'll tell you. Stick your head in your freeze box, okay? And then let me know how you feel in the morning. <laughs> well, actually, I think I'm gonna turn the jacuzzi on. I'll be, you know. I'm gonna oh, you up. rat bastard! <laughs> I thought for sure you guys said, yeah, I had to wear sandals today. It got too hot. Oh, you suck. Yeah, it's been like 80, 85, and then all of a sudden, it was a little bit rainy today, and then this little bit of a cold front, or whatever you want to say it was, came in. It was just a little bit chilly outside. I'm like, oh, that's Ooh, strange. Plus 60? But, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. I, oh, I have 57, seen, at least, you know. I, you know, the snow snowmobilers are always up here. Not one snowmobile or car drove down my street today. <laughs> they were all like going, yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I can't no. warm up enough, wear enough stuff for that. No, no thanks. No, I mean, if you have any skin that's showing on the tips of your fingertips, you're going to lose them. You know, wow. this is, yeah, this is no joke. Yeah, but you know what? You be smart. It's okay. I just stayed home all day. I had my fire going. My living room was up to about 90. <laughs> you know? And go, hey, you know, it's winter. How many days to spring? <sighs> you know? I get excited about March, Joe, even though yeah. I could get two feet of snow in March. It's just something about March. You're just going, okay, I think we made it. <laughs> you, know? yeah. you, know? you made it through the, the rough spot, at least. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, Fred and Barrett. Hey, January is pretty damn good. We got a lot of snow. I think it was like the last, last week of January. I ended up three storms, a little over five feet of snow. And but before that, it's been really controlled. So I can't really complain. And this thing, it's only supposed to last two days. So, you know, by Sunday, tomorrow. Yeah, today and tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, today and tomorrow. So tomorrow's the worst of it, and then that's it. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of what I'm taking. And, and then all of a sudden, we're back up into the 30s. <laughs> You're going, oh, yeah, that sounds oh. lovely. What we'll do. <laughs> Yeah, 30s are actually like the worst of, of my experiences in New Mexico. Like when I go, it's like you might have a morning that's in the 30s, depending on what part of the season I go. And, you know, if I go like if I go there in January or, or February, we might have some 30 degree, you know, mornings. But by the afternoon, it's, you know, 55. Like it's it's just beautiful weather later on. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's definitely short sleeves right there. 40s up short sleeves. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, yeah. Maybe for you guys. I, yeah, I'm. 50s, I can handle some of the mid 50s. I can do that, but yeah, it, it gets a little chilly even for me, you know. Yeah. Well, ne- next winter, I really would like to take a month down there, you know, down in the south and just get this. Joe, this shit gets old. I'll come pick <laughs> you up in the, I'll come pick you up in the plane. I've been, I've been going through that thing so fast trying to get the check ride done, which I still have to do. I think it may happen this week. Um, That's and then so move on to my twin, but it's like, you know, I, I he took me um, up, the guy that's going to do my training. I've been up twice in my twin engine, and the other day was just uh, yesterday. And uh, so I did a, like an hour flight and stuff. And it's just, it's, I mean, it's a fast airplane, a twin engine. It's a fast freaking plane. Everything is just fast. Um, and I'm like. Did you name it? Did you name it? Eskimo? No, no, I don't have a name <laughs> for it yet. But I was just like, you know, I was trying to get this thing done so fast with the single engine to just get my private there. Then I can easy. Just get enough hours in the twin to show that I'm competent, take the check ride, I'm done. And I'm like, okay, now I can fly to New Mexico, I can fly up to you, I can, you know, do all this stuff. And I'm going, as I'm flying this thing yesterday, I'm going, yeah, I better slow down a little bit. Let me just take my time, uh, get my private, but I don't need to be in a hurry in this. There's this is a what they call a complex aircraft. It's got you know retractable yeah. landing gear, it's a twin engine, it's got all kinds of shit and switches and de-icing equipment and just you may yeah, need that up here. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, if I go up there at the wrong time, I'm going to need that. But, yeah, just like, you know, slow down. There's no hurry, dude. Uh, it's freaking awesome. You know. Are you kidding me? 
But well, I'll just say, that, by that time, I should be able to come get you, pick you up, and we'll fly yeah. back. Then I won't have to go in a waiting line. That'd be awesome. No, I no security wands or checks or, you know, grabbing your balls as you go through. Nope. Come on, I'll pick you up. There's no, That's the thing. Like, you go up there and just get on the plane. See, there ain't nobody checking nothing. And again, yeah. we don't have to go to the international, air, big giant international airport. You just go to a small airport nearby. Pretty much any of them is going to have enough runway for me. Yeah, I know. They're getting to see you. Uh, I noticed that on the news. They're looking to hire a bunch more. What are those people that, that do all that checking? Oh, and TSA? Have, yeah, yeah. And uh, they said they would pay extra if you were a proctologist. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cough to the left. What do you mean? What is this? <laughs> what? <laughs> I think hey, we got one here, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no more of that nonsense. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, so they're saying this balloon is at 10,000 feet. Normal for this is 60,000 feet for that guy, Monkey Works, who usually tracks all that stuff. Uh, and let's think oh, about so- it, Joe. It, here we are, ready to go to war with that. And you're allowing that to happen. Do you think we probably have some inside problems here? Absolutely. I, I mean, that's the thing. Like, what are the I mean, chances that on. we're just going to let this this balloon float on by? And then a second buses. one, you know, like someone's, you know, we would have shot that thing down long ago if it was supposed to be, but it's not. Again, this is, I think, going to be part of the expose the roots. It's all being expose the roots of evil. So let this thing go by. Something's going to happen, maybe. And then, oh, look, Biden didn't do anything. Right. He said not to shoot down. He said that, oh, oh, my God, we got to get rid of him. We got to impeach him. Oh, we're going to do the 25th Amendment. Oh, no, no, no. And then Hunter Biden timeline comes in. And, oh, wow, we're off to uh, an interesting timeline. Yeah, I'm waiting to see that happen and then see the other string of events that occur. Hmm. It's going to happen. You know, yeah, it, it, it's like with every news story comes out, I know you're going. You're just wait. Oh, yeah, yeah baby. <laughs> It's getting close. Yeah, I'm not even focused on the. I'm not even the the vulture on the the poll for the cryptos. I'm the vulture on the the news feed right now. Like I don't even care about the crypto right now. Was, oh my god! Oh, Hunter Biden. What? what? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's coming. Oh yeah, you know, with a lot of these people, you, you know, just see it setting up gotta, right now easily. Yeah, you just got to sit back and and um, you know be smart here and um, be patient. Don't overreact. You know, that's the biggest thing. Once you re- overreact, then you're, you're working off of fear. And the spirit does not want us to do that. You know, yeah. that this is a physical and a spiritual war. It is. This has got to happen to change the course of humanity. Because the people that are doing what they're doing, they can't, they can't be in charge anymore. They can't yeah. do it. Because they're not for humanity. They're for themselves. So we'll see a lot of things that will happen. And uh, this is going to be an incredibly interesting year on all fronts. But I think we still need to look up. I go, I'll be looking up and I'll go, shit, that kind of looks like a bar. Oh, yeah. Oh, what is no. that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was a, a thing that they were saying, oh, look, at everyone's talking about how, you know, um, Things can be dropped from those uh, balloons and oh, yeah. Russia talking about, uh, you know, with us, with the tanks and the depleted uranium. He's like, you know, you know, New York's a good target or whatever. And I'm going, oh, shit, that's the dream I had. <laughs> OK, well, well, that's why I say some dreams. That you get, it may take six months, it might take a year, but you just write him down and then see what follows it. You know, and and keep this in your head, too. This is what bothered me about the balloon. And then the person that sent me the text today, you know, about an hour hour and a half ago, that um, you understand that they don't want our land destroyed because they want to use it to feed the people. So how would you eliminate everybody here without destroying the land where you could not use it. You see what I'm saying? That's why the balloon thing. EMP, things like that could do that because you knock out the grids and. Well, yeah. And then let people kill themselves, you know, 
or we let something, another pathogen go and um, let that run its course. So, like I said, we're, we're dealing with a new age. Okay. Um, but you know what? I still believe we're protected. I really, really do. You know, however, this, of course, you'll meet me up. You'll meet me at my bar on the other side. Whoa, dude, what the hell are we doing here? <laughs> are we early? <laughs> we didn't even get to go to the the uh, R- RV across the country thing we were planning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'll say, yeah, but wait until you see what we fly over here, Joe. You're going to like this shit. <laughs> yeah. Most likely. And then what do you what do you think about the um the Supreme Court is gonna take a second look at the Brunson brothers case about throwing out the Congress members? They said they're gonna have a, a rehearing on it, basically right. doing exactly what they were gonna do potentially yeah. on January 6th when they just decided, yeah, we're going to conference, yeah, we're not gonna mess with it, and then they kicked it out. But now they're saying, okay, we'll relook at it. Because yeah. they said, you know, look, we feel it's really important that you relook at it. Here's all the reasons why. And it's the same reasons, really, as the, the first reasons. Of course it is. So, again, if I'm throwing that out, why are they taking it again? <laughs> well, well, and, and they don't have to because they already refused. Right. It's just, yeah, done. So you've got to sit there and go, I kept hmm. getting, um, like, somebody's threatening them or to do something. And, they, and it's kind of like, oh, yeah. And then pull that thing out again. Which yeah. Oh, you sure about that? Yeah. It, yeah. And, and I think there's a lot of posturing going on right now because everything's going to come down, you know? And I, and I still believe that I think it was Dick Algaier, right? That drew that picture. Yep. Yep. Okay. I, when I saw the picture, I felt very strongly that it was because of an event, okay? And they were just shocked. And basically, they would be blamed for it because of the position that Congress and Senate has taken to arm other countries and do what they shouldn't be doing, that that escalated something and then something happened. I kept, I kept feeling an event around that. And well, not could, be a, could be a Chinese balloon thing here shortly, for all we know. That would actually fit right in with, with being China. If Spirit didn't tell me to look up in the month of February, then sat off with those comets 50,000 yep. years and out. And then freaking two balloons now? Give me a break, man. It, it, yeah. Well, you notice it's running at two, two comets, two balloons. What's the prophecy I've been working on? The 2-2 two, two prophecy? Yep. 2-2-2-2 two, 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 right there. Yeah. So... Are we going to have a two, two, two? I don't know, Joe. And, and, and the other thing that really bothered me is when I ended up at that church, remember I was talking to you on a Saturday, I said, mm-hmm. spirit came to me and the man told me to go to the church. Yep. And on there, I finally, I went in there and sure as shit behind the pulpit, there it was. And the last thing written was revelations two 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 i come quickly and that's in revelations and i've been talking about the great revealing the great revelations revealing of everything mm-hmm. and and what brought that forward was the man getting spit out of the whale's mouth yeah right yeah and i go yeah i kind of laughed and they said pay attention to it i was laughing at it i thought it was kind of funny and then that building collapsing in Miami, I think it was. Mm-hmm. And I said, Joe, I called you. I said, Joe, they're telling me there's something to this building. I don't know what it is. I said, you got to find it because you're the snoop. <laughs> you know, you're the guy. And well, you know, there's a, a, a lot of Jewish people in there. I said, no, 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 it's bigger than that. It's bigger than that. And I kept going. And then they pulled that young man out and his name was freaking Jonah. Now I look back at that Jonah and the whale. But yeah. the thing is, is he was supposed to be in the whale to give a warning to Nineveh, right? Or there'll be destruction. But what always bothered me about it was Jonah was pulled out of the rubble of destruction. So I'm going, shit. You know, so I'm thinking that there's going to be some destruction because it's part of that parable. 
You know, I mean, everything that came up with the two, two, and now it's happening, you know, with the two balloons, two comets. I'm going, oh, shit. I said, here we go. And actually, wasn't that on February the, the 2nd? Which, what, what, the, uh, the first balloon? Yeah, but not yeah. just that, the comet. Yeah, I think so. So now we have another 2-2. Two, two. Mm. That's like when you called me the other night. Yeah, I'm at mile marker 2-2. Two, two, <laughs> the figures. <laughs> you know, you're just going to go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. You know, it just keeps coming out, but you just got to look at it go, all right, it's good for our noggins. It keeps us thinking. What are you seeing, orbs flying around? I see a little bit. Yeah, there's a little little activity. (laughs) There's a little like, are you sure it's not just large Denver? (laughs) Yeah, I was going to say, compared to some of the nights, it's just minor. (laughs) No, this is stuff to even talk about. (laughs) Not like one of those big honkers that come by. Yeah. Come on, guys, show yourself. Joe likes you. Yeah. Do it one more time for the man. Come on. <laughs> Mickey loves you. <laughs> oh, my God. And, uh, oh, I also wanted to, because I got so many emails, everybody thought I was dying again, Joe. When I didn't when I didn't come in on the show with you and JC, I wasn't oh, yeah. dying. I was like, he's <laughs> just, he has busy. He was had to be somewhere. <laughs> Relax. Yeah, it was like, yeah, I, I just wanted to get back. It was one of those things. I found out too late. You know, it's like, are you dying? You know, I think they probably think, well, we'll get a better rating off of the die for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gonna make sure he's still alive. Okay, good. Yeah, let's we'll see how his accuracy is. <laughs> That's great. Oh my god. It's well, it's all fun. All you, you people it. go watch the TV show Gold Lies and Videotape Discovery Channel. It's on right now, East Coast time, anyways. And uh, I got set to record anyway, so I'm gonna I'm getting ready to go watch it. It's it's a uh, you know it's got something to do with treasure. I love it, and especially because I've it's I've gotten two dreams about the guy in there. For God's sakes, like you know, I just got a little bonus on Monday, so I'm going okay. And you're telling me now there might be 30 locations. Okay, that sounds cool because if he put something somewhere, it was very quick to get. Yeah, you can go back and get it really fast. He's not digging it way down. You know, he just yeah. made it. Just hide it enough to go back and get it quick. He didn't want to see people to follow him back to the big Yeah, yeah so. that made make sense. If anyone ever caught him, yeah. he'd be one little small stash, no big deal. But Blind Frog Mark. was very interesting. When they found the very secretive spy mobile up in the tree <laughs> oh, on, the camera. on a cliff, <laughs> I instantly I go, that's freaking Joe. I said, that's Joe. And they're going on, you know, somebody... In the government. High level, high level military operation. Yeah. And I kept saying to my mind, that's Joe. And then you came out and said, by the way, that was mine. I laughed my ass off. <laughs> yeah. We went, we went there. Me and my the guy that's suing him, my, my buddy uh True. He's uh and the other partner who is legit partner. That's why my buddy is suing him because he doesn't recognize him as a partner. And uh he's has proven so far otherwise, but it's going to go to court. But the other guy, they both admit like for sure. Yeah. He's definitely partner. Well, that guy told us, I want you guys to put a camera up there. I can't be there. And I want to see what's going on. Cause he, you know, isn't been to keep me up to date with stuff and he's supposed to. And uh, so what he said, well, I know what exactly what we need. So I went up there. Uh, this was, was it last year or yeah, I think it was last, last two years. Uh, two years is it? Yeah, I can't remember now. It might might have been two years or yeah. last year, twenty twenty one, twenty two, whatever it was. Yeah, no, I don't think it was maybe last year. But anyways, I went up there and uh, I shipped all the stuff up to him first, and then went up there and set it all up. And we rode on the big box. Okay, so if you watch the last season, last episode, we don't know who this is. We're going to find out. This is high grade military equipment. <laughs> Your name and address is on it. <laughs> yeah, we had both of the partners' names on there that he knows who they are especially the one he recognizes and the phone numbers and authorized by the one partner that they all recognize. <laughs> Cause he's the one that told us go ahead and put it up there. So they, it lasted a couple of days and then they took it down. And, uh, but we were, you know, we were able to, to, to look for a little bit, but uh, yeah, so it's, it's a, that whole thing is a big giant shit show going on, but I I'm hopeful that my friend will 
win that that part of the lawsuit and yeah just sit back and wait yeah yeah let it work out the way it works out so all that bullshit it's so rigged it, yeah everything they like there's so much it. stuff that's rigged i mean they, even in the first episode they were showing these hieroglyphs oh, the cameras and it was somewhere else it was on another property that's far away i mean far com- considerably from where they are and they're acting you know it's almost as if that's on the property you know and then you know when they made that pond and they scuba dived into it at first and oh, it's dangerous let's send the dr- little underwater drone in there and they found this like wooden it looked like a freaking underwater cabin with ropes tied in the corners like what's that there's rocks in there you know that's not even on their property that's on blm land bureau of land management land <laughs> just on the outskirts of their property so he's illegally digging so you're digging underneath it going into the other land yeah so- even right where they started digging is is on blm land so my buddy in recent times uh decided you know you can get a mining claim a, a mineral rights claim if it hasn't been taken already so he's looking it back up he goes you know we did this in 2008 me Dwayne, and the, the other partner at the time and Dwayne's, i don't want to pay for that shit i ain't paying no damn 900 dollars. this is bullshit we don't need it and he goes Dwayne, this isn't texas this is utah and they got some different rules here you only as an owner own the the top of land rights that's it you can't dig in your own shit for mining purposes unless you have a permit even though it's your own land ah it's bullshit so they ended up not renewing these things back in like 08 or 09. And then they sat dormant this whole time. So my friend's like, you know, gosh, I, you know, surely Dwayne or, you know, whoever's got these things. Nope. Wide open. So he goes down there and claims them all, the whole surrounding area, surrounding Blind Frog Ranch, which the original name of the property is actually called Crow Creek, the Crow Creek property. And he goes, wait a minute, Dwayne doesn't have his own property mineral rights either. And they go, no. It's open also. He goes, I'll take those too. You can actually take the mineral rights on someone's private property. It's not a residential house. It's just raw land. They're not farming. They're not doing anything. You can do it. So it checked off all the boxes. So now my oh. friend has them by the balls. They can't dig. They can't treasure hunt on his own land. They can't do the TV show without him, his permission. Because he's because got the mineral rights. That's right. And if you're digging, you're that's digging. crazy. So they're all they're all pissed off, and the guys, his lawyer sent like four lawyers down to the BLM land, you know, office, and oh. tried to get them to stop it and all this, and it, it didn't work. <laughs> he checked yeah. off all the you know boxes. He dotted his eyes and crossed his t's. This guy's legit. So the last I heard of, maybe three weeks ago, he goes, "Yep, I just got the final notification from BLM on the Blind Frog property. We're good. I already had the the okay on the other property. We're good there." So he goes, and the good news was we can go right into that tunnel or that that pond, like 90% of that pond or some some high percent of the pond is actually BLM, therefore it's ours. So he had a guy over there recently digging and brought some equipment in just uh, not in that exact spot, but he brought some equipment to look for caverns and things. He goes, okay, I think right here we need to start going down. Of course, it starts snowing, you know, it's December and it's snowing and it's just getting worse and worse, but they did make some progress and uh, they put up a little RV up there for the guy and... Uh, Dwayne came up and started yelling, ah, you can't be here, this and that, and all this bullshit, and brought these, these traffic cones and taped, like, blank BLM certificates of, like, whatever, like, mining claims that you have to post normally, but they're, they're not filled out. They, like, like print out blank ones and, like, try to trespass them off their own property. And so they, he's like, yeah, I think we're going to go have a chat with the BLM because that's, like, claim jumping, and he can get in a lot of trouble if he wants to go down that route. So, they, I mean, the guy's just doing one dumb thing after another, just an idiot. But it's like, go ahead, keep going. You know, you're digging yourself in a hole, but now you can't even do the TV show. Basically, unless you just fake it, like they've been doing some of it anyways, and just go to some other area and fake it till you make it. Because they've done a lot of faking on this TV show, way more faking than anyone has any idea. And um, not something I'm going to get into right now, but it, and this isn't the only one. All these TV shows we watch typically they got to keep you entertained and, you know, all this shit. And it's like, you'll be surprised that you think they're somewhere. They're not even there. They're staging it somewhere else. Yeah. My favorite is gold rush. Yeah. Parker and them, like there's not much staging. going. I mean, it's just they're mining their breakdowns, fix yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. We pulled in, you know, a thousand ounces and okay. Parker's doing his own thing. You know, that guy's just killing it. Parker's just killing it. You know, I liked his grandpa. Oh his, yeah. That man John, was just, grandpa. John, I think was his name. It, it, yeah. He was just, the man has such an incredible loving heart. 
Yeah. You know, and he's watching his, his grandson on the other side and he's just smiling. You know, how proud he must be of him. Yeah. I mean, he was a kid and look at what he's turned into. And we all got, we've all been able to watch. Yeah. You know, it, it, it really is a remarkable, remarkable thing. You know, but um, all right. Well, listen, yeah. everybody keep your eye on, on the uh, beef stew that gets spilt over because that's about to happen. Pay attention to something happening uh, with Iran and their neighbors. And I think we're dealing with something that may happen in the uh, the little island down there. I speaking, think it's all. Speaking of Iran, Iran, I had this dream. Okay. The day before it popped into the news, Iran Oh, is Israel striking Iran? Is this happening? All this stuff started popping up just, you know, several days ago. The night before that happened, I'm in this dream, and I'm like in a kind of a deserty-ish area, and I, I know where I am. I'm in Iran, and I'm walking with these Iranians, and I'm just sitting there going, I shouldn't be here. I don't feel right being here. I need to get out of here. I can't be seen here. I shouldn't be here. Um, was like the feeling, and then I, and then I woke up. And then the next day, all this shit about Iran's in the news. Yeah, but you know what just brought to me again? What? You started this, okay, is using large things. Or what do you call what do you call when you scan your land? You you've been using GPR, large, like ground no, train radar? No, the, the metal detector flies. Oh, drone, big drones. Drone. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's how they did all their attacks, is by using drones. Small ones, little yep. small drones. Yep. And here you are having this drone situation going on. So I said, you know, when when you get into these discernment of things, you know, through dreams of visions, that understanding that, you know, it's like when I said something about bridges, and then all these bridges started getting knocked down everywhere. Okay? Yeah, that's pretty nuts. Yeah. It, yeah, but it, it's not one item. So. I, I believe that that will spread out. There's so much more to it, and it's learning to put that discernment into what you're getting. That it, it's very rarely it's one meaning, very rarely, you know. So when you follow this out, and so here you are in the middle of the desert, and you're also having the dreams about the the drones, and you're up there, and it's like, come on, man, you know, a bunch of different meanings, yeah. Oh well, yeah. And it can span over a lot of different time. That's why writing them down is so important. Anybody, anybody who thinks when you wake up at three in the morning and you got this shit in your head, ah, oh, I'll remember that in the morning. Joe, what do you have to say? Yeah, to the no, you write that shit down right away. I grab, I grab my it. phone. I open an email to myself. I do voice to text quietly in my bathroom so I don't try to wake my wife up. And I'll just give myself enough information that I know I'll remember any little fine detail or something I just didn't quite get, or like yeah. if it's too long. But it, usually it's not long enough, anyways. I'll, and I'll just say the whole thing, and yeah. then send. Got it. And just like I, I got another one last night, it was another, and it was another treasure hunting dream. They're showing me these two openings, and it was very simple, very fast. I wake up, and then it's three a.m. Take a piss, and then the next thing I know, I can't go back to bed the rest of the night. Yeah, 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 all of my ass. I can't go back to bed. It's eight o'clock in the morning. I saw a big flash. It's like a big flash, like a flash, like someone took a picture flash. That's two now. I didn't see oh, the first okay. one. I, I saw this. There, there's another one. Is that your hot? Is that your lights doing that? Yeah. Is that you guys trying to show us something? Do it again if you want us to pay attention to what we're talking about. Okay. They just, I just asked them, well, you heard me when I said, right? If we need to pay attention to what we're talking about here, I said, would you do it again? And they just did it again. Well, so we're, we're, we're on our, the right path here, aren't we? With the 222. Yeah, we are. Wow. Hmm. Freaky shit. Okay. Yeah. Good night so to you all want to live in my world, do you? <laughs> <laughs> you wonder why woo woo dudes always laughing? Well, here you go. <laughs>
Uh, oh, man, uh, all I need is two orbs to land on each shoulder. That would finish a night off good. Oh, my God. Unbelievable. Crazy shit, man. Crazy shit. Well, it is what it is. Look at you. You're like staring at you. Yeah, I'm like, where's those orbs? They're there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Well, listen, I, I, I'm i glad we got together tonight. I like these these things like this. Just boom. You know, let's just do it. Yep. Let's Don't go even chat. have to let's tell anybody it. about it. It'll get out there. And, and we just do our things like this. And um, and I still want to do story time with you, Joe. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, where I can I bring bring in a lot of these different journeys that I've gone on, and and I think a lot of people would be interested in hearing it. Very spiritual, but very mind blowing. You know yeah. these, these things and things that have happened to you, Joe. <laughs> I think we could have For some sure. fun. You know, oh, yeah. doing a day on a weekend and. And just have a story time between you and I of supernatural things that everybody could just scratch their head at. No, dude. <laughs> you know? But um, all right, my friend, I know you want to go see your. Uh, it's fine because it's recording. I get to flat fast forward through all the crap commercials of pharmaceutical bullshit that I don't want to see. So it's just great. Perfect yeah. It, 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 uh, you know, it's funny you just brought that forward and you all wonder why. All right, I got to be careful. Um, that they're so protected. The last, uh, last year you talked about the medical association. Did you ever? Did you ever take a look at how many commercials? All, all these from CNN on down, they're all going down tubes, right? They're not doing business. But have you noticed who's buying all the commercial time on them? Pharmaceuticals. Bang. So they own them now. And I believe it was Bill Clinton that, with the, with the Congress at that time, that allowed that bullshit to get on on the airwaves. Well, that's I, that's because he figured that his wife mm-hmm. was going to be coming in sooner or later, also. And unfortunately, our country really has lost something here, you know, and and, and it's sad. Um, and I hope, hopefully, we'll turn this all around. Well, I got something the other day. It, it, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, well, spirit can give me something without dreaming. Where I wake up and the thought is immediately in my head as, as I awake. With, it's not a dream, though. Absolutely. And it happened just very recently, and it was very simple. I, I, heard, I heard these exact words. They never thought she would lose. Now yeah. they all lose. Yeah. Oh, they all are. Yeah, they all oh, are. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And But I don't think it'll be in a way that everybody thinks. I think, you know, you'll, you'll see certain people just step down and disappear. And, and I really believe that that is the way it's going to happen. And, um, yeah, and we're here to watch it. Mm-hmm. Oh, Enjoy uh, the show. Well, yeah, the tree of evil is is being taken out. Said this two years ago, and all of the roots are going to be exposed worldwide, and that's what's happening. It has to, Joe. It has to. Yep. You know, for humanity's sake, it has to. Well, okay, all, all right, right. Listen, this has been fun. <laughs> we'll do it again sometime, people. Absolutely. And I'm alive.